A few years ago, we introduced you to a statewide network of weather observations called the Keystone Mesonet. It's a collaborative system that continues to grow and evolve. And here to talk more about it tonight, we're joined by Kyle Imhoff, the state climatologist here at Penn State, and Jeff Jumper, the state meteorologist based out of Pima. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening, Rob. All right, starting off with you, Jeff, what is the Keystone Mesonet? Just for a refresher, and how many observing stations are we talking about? Any new ones that have been added over the past few years? Sure, so we came up with this idea maybe about five years ago, and it was on the idea of just having a Mesonet for the Commonwealth. And we decided to talk to some of the state agencies that actually had weather data uh, in their uh, repertoire of information. And we, we learned that there were about four state agencies, including a uh, fifth with us being Pima and also the federal data that was out there that we could, you know, maybe tap into on a real time basis. We pulled all that data together and made it available in real time on a website that's free to the public at keystone-mesonet.org. Um, we have about uh, 228 sites that are available for folks across the Commonwealth. Uh, the thing continues to grow. We're really excited about having it. Uh, we launched it in February of 2020 and then uh, the pandemic happened. So there's been kind of a you know, a lot going on that, that's distracted folks, but we're really excited to really re-showcase this as we uh, move forward in the next uh, couple of years. Mm -hmm. Kyle, some of these stations are not just your typical weather data that they're gathering. There are actually some other uh, instrumentation on there, even gathering soil temperature, right? Yeah, that's right. So as Jeff mentioned, we're collecting a lot of this weather data from not only state agencies, but we developed our, our own network um, that was funded through Penn State. And that's the, the PA Environmental Monitoring Network. The, the units for this network are designed to not only measure our, our standard atmospheric measurements, temperature, sometimes at different heights, relative humidity, uh, dew points, wind speeds, wind direction, all the standard stuff you would think of. But like you mentioned, we also are measuring things like snow depth. That's one of the unique aspects of this, um, this network, as well as soil temperature, soil moisture at six different depths into the soil. So that's really important for the agricultural industry. So um, we're really excited about that. And, and like Jeff said, we have 13 sites right now, and we're, we're hoping to expand that over the next, uh, the next several years. And Kyle, sticking with you for a quick moment, you know, the, the whole point of this Mesonet is to get that data out there that can be used for a lot of different purposes. And it really wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the partnership. So we're talking Penn State, Pima, the DCNR, PennDOT and others. What's it been like working with all of these organizations to get this project together? And are there any other new partnerships on the horizon? Right. So that's one of the more meaningful aspects of the project, I would say, is that we have so many of these partnerships. And obviously, I'll give a give a nod to Pima for being our, our funders for all of this. So, so without Jeff's efforts and, and establishing the, the necessary relationships at the state agency level and establishing the funding mechanisms, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So um, that's that's really been exciting to see all of these, these partnerships. And uh, one of the things we haven't talked about thus far is uh, Campbell Scientific. And that's the partnership we have with them. And not only providing the equipment for our PA environmental monitoring network sites, but they're also developing the software and the user interfaces that we're going to use for the real-time alerting system um, for the emergency managers across the state. Much of what we do is dealing with uh, natural disasters, and those that aren't natural disasters, weather usually plays a role in, in it. So with that being said, piggybacking off the idea of the Keystone uh, Mesonet and picking off the idea of the um, iFlow system, which was originally designed to give emergency managers a heads up before flooding happened, we thought, hey, wait a minute, we can not only do that for flooding with the data that we're pulling in from all these state networks, but we could also do it for other weather hazards. So uh, the idea behind the second or the back end side of the Keystone Mesonet is to provide that alerting to the emergency managers and they can make reactions to that. So we're trying to get that information out to folks to help them better make decisions or more rapidly confirm that something on the ground is happening. And are the alerts available now or will they be rolled out later this year? We are working on the alerting system right now and we're planning on releasing it over the next uh, month or two to specifically to emergency managers to, to initially release it. And then we eventually will expand it to, be, to beyond emergency managers to other user groups as we go through the next uh, several months to, to a couple of years. So, so this system will continue to be revamped and we'll make uh, tweaks and adjustments to it over time. And we're excited to see where, where, which, which directions this project heads as we go through the next uh, several years. 
you know, one cool aspect of the Keystone Mesonet is uh, the fact that some of these stations actually have cameras attached to them. So you're able to not only get the weather data, but also get, you know, kind of a live eye of what's going on as some of these events unfold. I understand, Jeff, that you were actually able to use some of this equipment to catch a tornado. Sure. So uh, a, a weird event, you know, we were watching the storms move through the southeastern part of Pennsylvania uh, during Ida, and this is probably, you know, uh, a very unique circumstance that this happened right over one of our sites. And uh, I was sitting in our um, command center and basically uh, watching the storms come through on radar, and I got an email stating that um, there was a 70 mile an hour or so wind gusts uh, at a site where there was a tornado warning. And I thought, well, wait a minute, let me check this out. I reached out to PennDOT and asked for access to their archive uh, uh, camera system. And we were able to match everything up in, in near real time, realizing that that was actually a wind gust coming from a tornado moving through uh, Southeast Pennsylvania near Ambler. And right at 540, you can see the camera was nice and clear on the snapshot before that. And then you can see the rain and the wind pushing things over. They lost power to that site. They lost the camera, but it still gave us the alert uh, within a couple of minutes of when that went over. That helped us confirm that something did happen there. Uh, of course, people that live there will know that, that something happened. But for us looking at it remotely, for the weather service folks, et cetera, having those confirmations and getting that alerting that something has happened, knowing that you know, that potential for that tornado to be moving through that area is, is now confirmed through observation, remote observation, uh, can play a huge role. And uh, while it might have been a once in a lifetime catch to, to see a tornado move right over that site, um, we found other circumstances with, with rain events. Two, three hours before, we're starting to see the rainfall rates, the rainfall totals. And then all of a sudden, you see the advisory or flood warning come out from the Weather Service. So um, it, it does play a, a crucial role in trying to get folks to be able to react or, or maybe help downstream of an event that's ongoing. Well, gentlemen, we are out of time, but thanks so much for talking about the Keystone Mesonet. To you, those of you watching at home, you can check out the Keystone Mesonet yourself. Just go to keystone-mesonet.org. And we will be right back in just a moment with more. 